Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show. And we don't have too many changes this week to the rankings. Uh, some changes in the middle of the rankings for the men, but let's go have a look at the past results because we had some upsets last week in the tournaments. Starting with the WTA, and we had the Hamburg Open with Pera winning her second title in two weeks, beating Contivate in the final 6-2, 6-4 to lift another trophy, and she got a boost in the rankings for that. At the Palermo Open, we had Bagu beating Bronzetti 6-2, 6-2. At the Swiss Open, we had Kaspar Ruud defending his title, defeating Berrettini in a very fun match. 4-6-7-6-6-2. Rude adding another clay court title to his career. And at the Hamburg Open, the biggest tournament of the week, we had Musetti defeating Alcaraz in a very entertaining final. 6-4, 6-7-6-4. The first title for Musetti, and it was an ATP 500, so a big title for him, and he got rewarded in the rankings for that. Let's start with the WTA rankings and not too much change with Iga Fiontech staying at number one, Annette Contivate staying at number two and distancing herself from Zachary, who's at number three. We've got Badosa at four, with Jabir just close behind at number five, Sabalenka at six, Pagula comes in at seven, but Danielle Collins, she goes down one spot to number nine, allowing Muguruza to go up to number eight, that's because last year, Collins had an event that she didn't play and didn't do well at this week, so lost a lot of points for that. And Emma Raducanu, she still stays in the top 10 for another week. Having a look at the race to the finals, and no change here with Igor Fiontek still the only player to qualify. Staying at number one, Jabir at number two, with Goff at number three. Pagula comes in at number four, with Zachary at number five. Kazakina comes in at six, Badosa at seven, Benchich at eight, Kudumatova at nine, and Daniel Collins rounds at the top 10 for the race of the finals this week. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week, and the two champions of last week's tournaments. Bagu, she went up 12 spots, number 32 in the world, and Pera goes to a career high 54 in the world, 27 spots higher than last week after winning her second title in a row. So a couple of players that won titles last week, getting boosts in the ranks. A couple of players that went down in the rankings. Zanevska, she went down 27 spots to number 99 in the world after losing a bunch of points from tournaments that she won last year. And Ruse, down to 104 in the world, 35 spots lower than last week. Again, losing a lot of points from matches and tournaments that she won this time last year. So no surprise there. The players that did well this week and gained a lot of points went up. And the players that didn't repeat their result from last year went down. Having a look at the ATP now and not too many changes with Medvedev still at number one. Zverev staying at number two with Rafa at number three. City Pass comes in at number four. But Alcaraz, after making the final of Hamburg, gets to a career high number five in the world. One spot higher than last week, pushing Rude, who won a tournament and still lost it down in the rankings. He went down to number six. And that's because Hamburg, the final, was worth more than winning Gestad. So it depends on, it's not so much what you win, it's where you win or how well you do at certain tournaments. And that proves it just there. Number seven is Djokovic. Coming in at number eight is Rublev. Oje Eliasim comes in at number nine. And Yannick Sinner rounds out the top 10 for this week. Having a look at the race of the finals. And again, not too many changes with Rafa staying at number one. He's so close. Only 400 points away from qualifying for the ATP Finals. City Pass, though, he goes down to number three, making way for Alcaraz, who added 300 points to his total, making the final in Hamburg. So he goes in at two. City Pass goes down to three. Kasper Ruud, he stays at number four and solidifies his spot after a win last week. Zverev is staying at number five despite not playing. Medvedev comes in at six. Rublev at seven. Felix Ogiel Yassim at eight. Taylor Fritz at nine. And Novak Djokovic hanging on to that top 10 spot for now, but we all know he's not going to be playing for a few months while a lot of players will be playing over the American hardcourt season. So I don't know how much longer we're going to see Djokovic on this list. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week and Musetti. Like I said, career high ranking, 31 in the world. He's gone up 31 spots higher than last week after winning in Hamburg, the biggest trophy of his career. And Dominic Team, after another very good performance, making a semi-final last week, he's gone up 75 spots to 199 in the world. So again, Team trying to get in the top 100 for the US Open so he can automatically qualify to play. And the players that have gone down in the rankings, a couple of players that played well last year at this time, Ramos Vinoles, he's gone down 12 spots to number 52. And Gaston has gone down 16 spots to number 75. So again, players that did well this week, that earned a lot of points, and the players that didn't result the same as what they did last year went down in the ranks. So not too many changes on either the ATP or WTA, but, but still, we're going to keep an eye on Dominic Team who keeps rising up the ranks. So there you have it. Not too many changes. Like I mentioned, not too many changes in the rankings at all, but 
We do have the American Hardcore season coming up, uh, starting unofficially, I guess, this week in Atlanta, but then next week on the 1st of August, that's when we kick off. We've got Washington, San Jose, and of course, then the big tournaments, Cincinnati and Canada, and then the US Open at the end of the month. So we're getting serious now. The US Open series is here. But let me know down in the comments below. Are you shocked about any of the rankings? I mean, there's not too much to talk about. There's not too much to be surprised about. But uh, I guess over the next few weeks, especially with Djokovic not being able to play, how far will he uh, fall, I guess, over the next couple of months? Because remember, he has a lot of points to defend at the US Open, and he won't be able to defend any of those. Let me know down in the comments below. Is there anything that shocks you in the rankings this week?